Welcome back to Undulations. So this is going to be a short update video that picks up where I left off in the last video in which we work through the steps of developing a bit code that describes a patch on the CASA 1.5 semi-modular synthesizer from Basel Instruments. Now, if you missed that video, go check that out. Now, at the end of that video, we developed a random patch by flipping five pennies to get the bits for our bit code and then wiring that up, setting the knobs and listening to it. So the first thing I did was make a program that would generate a bunch of patches. And so I ended up doing a hundred different patches and these are just a description of the patch. And I actually made a new reference sheet to have it all on one page. And I set up all these patches and listened to them. And uh, actually the intro patch was the 98th out of the hundred patches. I thought it turned out kind of nice. It's sort of a bouncy pattern. It's got some noise in it. So that one had a lot going right, but I learned quite a bit. I like to do that sort of thing where that, you know, I wouldn't do a thousand of them, but I think if you only do 10, maybe you don't learn enough by doing a hundred. Uh, you get an idea of sort of like what you're getting into and how random patches sort of can behave. And uh, I did a histogram of it. So uh, this is sort of some subjective grading that I did of the patches. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, quite a few A's. I think maybe my scale sort of tended to drift a little bit towards the end where that I started to see some I, maybe my expectations were lowered and so I was like wow that is actually pretty good uh, but as you'll see a lot of them fall in the C or D category where that C is just sort of like maybe an interesting tone and then D is maybe almost like a hard to hear tone and then a F even had an F minus those are ones that uh, basically they don't make any sound at all so we'll come back to the evaluation part of this in a minute but i wanted to talk some about what i learned in the process of doing these hundred patches all right so the first thing that i want to talk about learning during the process of doing all these patches was that I had the audio set up wrong in the last video and it's important because as part of this uh, random patch thing i want to be able to tap the left and the right signals evenly on here and i sort of did it in a simplified way by taking an aux cable going into channel one on the dude and you can hear the right channel a little bit but that's just basically through some like crosstalk in the castle it makes the left channel far louder. This is the sort of thing that could be a little bit potentially startling if you had turned it up to capture the right channel and then somehow switched over to the left channel. It would be super loud. So I want to say that the right way to go about this, in my opinion, is to use a stereo on one side and then two mono jacks on the other side so basically you've got a three channel setup on the dude where you've got left right and then the actual castle out and this works nicely the other thing that i didn't have in the last video is that when i'm coming out of the dude and going into my recorder i started using a inline attenuator which basically is just a thing uh, that you can order goes like with headphones and that sort of thing. This is good with the castle because the signal is quite strong and it enables you to have more range on the dude. And 
So those are a couple of changes I made to the audio setup, and I think in general they were an improvement. Now, another thing that I learned doing all these random patches is a little bit more of a conceptual thing, which is that I learned that I had to patch a particular way. I set things up a particular way, and it, not to say that it's necessarily bad to have your own way of doing stuff, but seeing a whole bunch of random stuff is like opened my eyes to different ways to uh, accomplish the same thing, and there might be subtle differences to it. And so as an example of that, if you think about, say you wanted to hook one of the Castle LFO features like a the triangle LFO, maybe you hook that to the timbre modulation and the pitch modulation. So that would be two patch cables coming from the triangle LFO. That's the way I would typically set it up. But sometimes that would sort of develop as I set up a random patch by going from the LFO to the timbre modulation and then from the timbre modulation to the pitch modulation. So that is more of a chain, whereas what I tend to do, I guess, is more sort of a fan out, could be sort of a series versus parallel type of thing. And they do achieve the same thing, but I started to realize that in terms of making changes to your patch, uh, the series method might be a quicker way or uh, it's at least a different way of uh, say you want to change the LFO from the triangle to the square, you just have to jump one wire and you can do that quick and it makes the change to both of the destinations versus having to change uh, both of the source wires when you're in the fan out setup. So it was just something to think about and we're going to come back to this in a few minutes as I talk about some of the genetic algorithm stuff that we'll be coming into down the road. Now. The third thing that I wanted to talk about is that one of the patches, there was some wiring on it that I've never really done or noticed doing, and I don't understand how or why it works. And um, it's basically wiring from the uh, square LFO into the LFO reset, which that makes sense to me. But then from the LFO reset on the castle into the bit in patch point on the castle. It doesn't really make any sense to me, but my only guess is that it does some sort of uh, little statistical fluctuation. And so if you set things right with the low frequency oscillator, it can actually have an effect on the sound. And so this is what the trace looks like and what this thing sounds like. And it basically works for that if you fine tune the LFO very carefully, you can have sort of a drone that goes on for a while, it's a little bit noisy, and then suddenly you get a very different type of sound that comes out of it. And this is something that can happen maybe every five minutes. It seems random. There was a case of where it happens sort of two times, one right after the other, and then a several minute gap, and then a five minute gap. And so this is uh, some pretty interesting castle behavior where that I don't really have a good explanation for it, but it's the sort of thing that maybe in an art installation or a longer form piece, it might be kind of a cool thing to know about. So I'll put some more details about it in the video description. So now I just wanted to talk for a few minutes about where this is headed. Um, I'm not an expert on genetic algorithms. I've read a book on it, I've done a little bit of coding on it over the years, but this is sort of uncharted waters for me and I've certainly never applied it to anything like music in this way. So the result, I just want to say up front, could be sort of a bust, but we're going to try it anyway. And here's how it's supposed to go. It's uh, think along the lines of something like botany, where the Maybe you want to make a drought resistant wheat, or maybe you want to make a bigger tomato or something like that. And so you can have different species of tomatoes or wheat, and you can try to cross pollinate them 
and get some different results. So we've got a code for a castle patch and we're going to take a code for another castle patch and we're going to sort of like choose a breakpoint somewhere in those 127 bits and pull that code apart. And then we're going to use the same breakpoint in another patch and then we're going to mix and match them. And now that might completely break both of them or it might make them better. And that's going to be sort of the thing that is a little bit subjective, very subjective in this is where I decide sort of what's referred to in genetic algorithm nomenclature as the fitness of these different patches. And to do that in maybe not a completely subjective way, have a little bit of objectivity about it. I'm going to try and do it by not really so much listening to them as looking at the traces in software like Audacity, where that I'm going to be looking at the sound coming out of the castle, really the sound coming out of the dude, all three channels, and looking for first is their volume, and then are there any repetitive patterns? Is the wave shape complex? Is it noise? Does it alternate between a wave shape and noise? And so it's the sort of things that we hear, but I feel like by trying to look at it and maybe go, aha, this one's got structure here and structure there and the wave shape is complicated. Those are several good factors for it, whereas this thing is a flat line and so it's clearly no good. Now, the way that this is supposed to work though is if, if you think about something like a barcode, you have two books that have barcodes on them. If I cut up half a barcode or another half a barcode, put them together, it's not going to make another book, okay? The, the chances are great, almost zero, that uh, you're not going to come up with a barcode for another book. But if you've got sort of, when I say modules in this case, I don't mean modules on the synthesizer, but modules within the bit codes that do features that make sense on the castle. So for example, the stepped LFO is going to one of the uh, modulation patch points, so pitch or something like that. And then maybe the uh, plus is routed to the bit in patch point. And so those things sort of go together to make a difference. And it's something that maybe that can be sort of moved from one bit code where maybe the knob settings are not so great for it over to another one where the knob settings are good. And so I've sort of set this whole thing up with all this in mind to have the knob settings as like an intact sort of thing. And so what if you sort of break code apart in uh, where, down where the knobs are in this bit code? Well, it'll keep the wiring the same, but it'll change some of the knob settings. And so uh, I feel like that it's going to be interesting to explore. And the way that you explore it is by basically doing sort of a tournament where that you uh, might have uh, 64, 128 patches. I'm not quite sure what level I'm going to be able to do this, but you sort of pick the best ones and then you mix and match their codes. And then you pick the best ones out of those and mix and match their codes. And you keep going down and then maybe I'll have like four patches at the end of this that are sort of the, the outcome, the product of this. And as I say, could end up being a bust, but I'm also keeping my eye out to report back on things along the way that make this more interesting. Now, I've already quit flipping coins and I have to say that looking at the bit codes and stuff like that, it's prone to errors and that sort of thing. And so I'm pretty happy with the next tool that I've coded for doing this to speed things up, which is basically I just hit a button on the computer and it will uh, spit out a new castle bit code that's down in the lower left corner. And then it will give a wiring list, which I think is ideal to kind of work from. And I've got it set up for the castle schematic where the, 
the wiring shows up on there and the knob directions are very clearly indicated. So I've sort of exaggerated the knobs for this. And so, as I was saying in the last video, I feel like random patches are a good way to learn about the device that you're working with. And this software that I just showed you helps make that easier. So if that's the only thing to come out of this project, then I'm content with that. But hopefully we will get some interesting sounds down the road. And so that brings up the point of the next video. I feel like this uh, genetic algorithm stuff may take a little while to kind of like get straight and do all the stuff. And so we do that, not the next one, but the one after that. And so for the next video, I think I want to talk some about my uh, modular synthesis setup, my Eurorack setup. I've got a module coming in the mail, so that'll be a new thing to sort of put into the system and see what it can do. And so that'll be good and maybe do a little bit of a longer musical piece. So I look forward to seeing you for that one. And uh, to close this video out, I'm gonna just show a bunch of random patches. And if you're interested, you can pause them and put them into your castle and uh, see what you get.